I'm here today with Pat Gardner of the Marist men's basketball team. Hey, Pat, how are you doing today? Good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Um, you know, so the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, your guys run this tournament. You know, you guys had this magnificent run in the MAC tournament. You did something that no other Marist team has done. You've made it. You made it all the way to the championship game as the 11th seed, you know, so tell me about that journey. Tell me how you guys completed that run. Well, it was a great run. I mean, at, since I'm a senior, uh, I wanted to kind of go out with something that would be memorable. Um, but towards the end of the season, we we had a lot of ups and downs as a team. Um, as someone who's like a, a senior and leader on the team, it was important to keep the team together. Um, you know, when you're an 11 seed, you have a lot to not really look ahead upon because you just want the season to end. At least that's what some people think and some teams do. But um, we kept with it as a team. We kept listening to our coaches. And on senior night, I think that was the last home game before or the last game, we got kind of into a little fight with Quinnipiac and they they beat us on our home court. So that left the sour taste in our mouth. And going into the playoffs, we kind of knew like, okay, we could do this, but one game at a time. And before you know it, we were all motivated, really locked in against Manhattan. And it kind of just happened. And one game at a time, that win against Manhattan kind of propelled us and got us ready for Quinnipiac, which is something we got, uh, we marked on our calendar because Quinnipiac is the team we placed on, played on senior night. Um, and we wanted to beat them very badly. Before you know it, we're beating them. And then semifinal game against St. Peter's, we take care of business there. And then before you know it, we're in the, the championship game. So it's, it was kind of a, a surreal week because you're with the teams and you play all these teams throughout the season. And, you know, the people who finish in the top three, they feel like they're top dog of the hotel. Uh, but then Marist ended up being the last one of the last teams staying at the hotel. So that was it was a great run. But I think it was just a testament to how locked in we were towards the end of the season and believing that anything is possible, no matter what your record says. And if you have good players on your team, you know, record disappears when you play each other in the playoffs. So took it one game at a time and the rest was history. So. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch you. I watched all the games. I actually ended up coming down to Atlantic city and I watched the St. Peter's game and then the Iona game. So tell me about the Iona game. Like, how was that? You know, you guys are heading into the, into this championship game. Like, it seemed like almost at the beginning, you almost had to like work the nerves out a little bit. So tell me the, about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just playing in an atmosphere like that was was amazing. The, a lot of the Maris uh, fans showed up, which was just, it, we felt so, so amazing that all the hard work we've done, people would show up in a moment like that. Um, but Iona's was a very good team. Um, they played UConn in the first round and were up against them. So kind of sucked that they had to play them in the first round. But anyway, to our game, yeah, they were a good team. But at the same time, we also believed in ourselves. We tied it up in the second half. Um, and, you know, they kind of, it just slipped away. But, you know, no excuses. But playing th uh, four games in five days was definitely very challenging. But we were just running off pure adrenaline, pure heart. Uh, and I had a million blisters on my feet, a million bruises. Um, but you play, you know, I, I wouldn't trade that. I would play 10 more games in a row if I had to. So uh, very tired, but you're kind of just running off whatever you have left in the tank. Yeah, no. So this is a little, this is related to the tournament, but um, I noticed that you were wearing number 33 during yeah. the games when you had been wearing 15 all year. So can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I... I don't have any anger problems. I'm very, if anything, I'm too nice on the court, but something when we played at Quinnipiac, it was probably maybe three quarters for the season. Um, I didn't hit the shots I wanted to. So when we were walking into the locker room, like I, I ripped my Jersey just a little and I, I never get mad. So it was kind of like a crazy moment and it was, it was big enough where I couldn't play. So they had to get a replacement Jersey for my away game. And uh 33 was the only option so I decided to just rock with that um and it was kind of crazy because I I was mad upset after the Quinnipiac game but then we ended up beating them in my new number so That's awesome 
I'll wear whatever number it takes. <laughs> yeah, no, it seemed to work out for you because you had a really great run there in the tournament, ended up getting some cool recognition, making it to the all-star game and competing in that skills challenge as well. So yeah. if you want to tell me about that, that would be awesome. Yeah. So I was, you know, thankful, like honored enough to be invited to something like that. And it was a great experience. They flew me down to Houston. I competed in a three on three tournament um, and I played against some really great players who also did really well for their teams throughout the country. And then um, I was selected to play in the Reese's All-Star Game, which is uh, it's technically the top 20 seniors. I know there are a lot of really good seniors out there um, and you kind of just play at the uh, the final four arena. And it was just a, a crazy experience. Just the people I've met being surrounded by that many talented players. I mean, everyone I met was verified or something. I'm like, wh wh you're famous. What what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, so it was, it was a, it was a great experience. Something I remember forever. So yeah, very that's awesome. Great. Yeah. So, you know, you say that they're famous, but I feel like you've kind of become a celebrity around the Marist campus. Do you Thank feel you. like that? I mean, I think, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be myself. So I'll never think of myself as a celebrity. I'm just the same old Patrick, but, you know, I think definitely, uh, there, you know, people do come, know my name when, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, on campus or off campus so that really makes me feel really happy inside if people do that i don't know if um some people make jokes like that but i'll never call myself a celebrity uh you you can call me a celebrity though <laughs> so it's okay <laughs> yeah no i guess a lot of people i talk to consider you a celebrity you know because the basketball oh. team is such a big team on campus so it, yeah i guess best player on one of the bigger teams you know i would say it's celebrity status in my book <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess let's rewind a little bit. You know, can you tell me about um, your journey as a basketball player? I know you've talked about it before, but maybe if you want to talk about it br quickly for those that haven't heard, you know, how you worked your way up here to Maris. Well, it's kind of a, a long story. Do you want the broad? Do you just want to do we have are we on a time constraint now? No, or? no, no there's no time okay. constraint. Whatever you want to tell. It's your story. Okay, well, thank you. So out of high school, I played high school varsity basketball at public school. Um, I didn't, I had a good senior year, but I didn't have, I didn't have any uh, scholarships or interest from anyone. Um, and it was kind of like, all right, I was six, seven, six, eight at the time. I could, I average, you know, a good amount of points, but didn't have the recognition. So um I didn't also just want to stop playing. I wanted to keep playing. And I was like really close to just going to SUNY Buffalo or SUNY New Paltz and just going to school there and walking on the teams there um, just because I didn't have anything. But I didn't love the schools. I didn't think I was I was done giving up basketball. So I decided to go to Nassau Community. Um, and I met the coach before I decided to go. I committed there in August and I was it was it was crazy. You know, people are committing May 1st to schools. Uh, so I decided to go there, had a good year, really liked the coach. I mean, I still keep in contact with him all the time today during holidays. And he came to some of my Maris games, you know, awesome, awesome guy. Like, I'm so honored to know him. Um, but anyway, so, you know, I play my first year. I'm still very skinny at the time. Have a good year. Um, but then, you know, nothing really happens. I come back to Nassau for my second year, I get injured, unfortunately. So I missed the season there and I'm thinking, all right, this, this is not the way I want it to go right now. I'm very anxious, um, but I, I kept with it. Um, and I went for a workout with Iona, which was kind of a risk because I was just finishing up rehab. Obviously I was not in game shape or anything, but I just went I didn't, you know, I don't know how I, I don't remember how I did, but obviously not good enough because the, the coach, he came up to me after he said I wasn't even, you know, close to being a division one player. And that kind of motivated me to, you know, I need to, I need to work way harder than I have. I know I'm tall and I have the skill, but that's not enough. So I went back to NASA. This was uh, right before COVID. So 1920 that year. And I had a good year. I was an All-American. I took my team to the uh, quarterfinals in junior college. Um, then COVID hit. So, you know, recruiting, I couldn't go on any visits. And I didn't even really get any visits. I 
you know, I was in, I got two D2 offers and one of them was St. Michael's College and decided to go there. Um, and then, you know, COVID, I didn't have a season. So just practice with the team, got stronger. You know, there's no pressure with games. So I'm just you know, trying to get better, um, meeting a lot of new people. And then fast forward to the year 2021, 2022, I finally get my chance at the D2 level. I'm very excited. I didn't know what to expect. Um, obviously, you know, before I committed to St. Michael's, I've always wanted to play division one, but I kind of swallowed my pride and I'm like, this is a great situation. Um, full scholarship. I'm very excited. Uh, and sometimes it was just, you know, things don't go your way in life, but another, just cause a closed door will open up a new door for you. So that's kind of how I looked at it and dominate at this level. So why not? Um, and as the season went on, you know, we're winning games, we're losing a lot of games. And I didn't think in my head that I wanted to play division one after this, I was kind of, you know, very at peace of mind that I was at a night, good school, made a lot of good friends, full scholarship. But when, you know, the spring kind of rolled around after the season, I decided, uh, should I put my name in the portal? I mean, I, I didn't know the transfer rules. I didn't even, and I talked with my parents and some other people. And um, I think the best decision I made for myself was putting my name in. And then Maris came along and just, uh, they they offered me only division one school to offer me um, out of the portal, just committed there, took that chance. I was deciding between staying at St. Michael's or coming to Maris and then decided to come here and then just worked on my game, improved. And, you know, obviously the rest is history came here and try to make the best of it. So. It's awesome. It's a really inspiring story, to be honest. Um, so you. when, when you were coming to Maris, what role were you expecting? Like, did you know that you were going to be, you know, the star player on Maris, you know, with the ball, the majority of the time kind of running the offense or what did you think that you were going to be doing? Well, I didn't think, I would per se be, you know, have this type of season. I knew I had to earn people's respect uh, and everything. The coaching staff recruited me to score. Uh, they didn't know how many I would score. They just said, look, we need we need scores for this year's team. That could be, we need you to average just double digits. You know, they just wanted me to average like 10 or 12 points, I, I was thinking. Um, but with every, you know, situation you, you adapt and, you know, things change throughout the season. And I was able to assert myself uh, amongst really talented players so uh yeah I didn't know I'd average the stats I'd average now or do the things I do now just kind of making the best of every situation I was in yeah no I mean I think for a period there I don't know if you finished but you were leading the Mac in points per game is that right um I I yeah I think for maybe like a week or something oh, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> the the guy who's who led the league is very good so Noah Thomason so Okay, it was, cool. It was a good battle. Um, so you talk about your teammates here at Maris. Do you have like a favorite teammate, like someone that you connected with very well? Someone you want to shout out, maybe? No, I, I like them all, but okay. definitely my roommate Stefango, I'd say uh he, we're both, you know, we're here for one year. We relate so much. Shout out to him. Um, great teammate, you know, great friends, honored to know him. So shout out to Stefan Ingo. I think there's an article about him too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're just too cool for, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, he's a great person. So just so happy to know him. Yeah. And then with you two leaving, you know, I, uh, there's a lot of young guys on this mayor's team. So who do you think is going to kind of take over that star role next season when you guys are gone? Well, besides any bigs because I think there's no bigs returning I don't think um but you know the wings uh the guards are all very good I, I love playing with all my teammates I mean you know Isaiah Brickner was able to assert himself during the tournament and I love playing with him throughout the season so I think he's someone who's ready to take the next step but everyone's been uh pretty much working uh, Jaden Daughtry has been getting better um, Noah Harris is always hitting shots in practice. Cam's doing a lot of good stuff. Trace. Um, and then also the walk-ons too. They just, you know, they're always there to support us. Always, you know, they're during practice and everything. They're just great people. So I think the team's in good hands. It's just whether or not they could, you know, complete that with adding some more bigs and stuff. So I think they're in really good hands. I'm excited to watch them. Yeah. And I think that also starts at the top from coach Dunn. Can you tell me about what it's like to play for him 
Yeah, Coach Dunn is um I I've only known him for one year, but I I I've learned a lot from him and I think the the best part about him is that he always pushes me and he he tries to, you know, keep me on my toes and he said a lot of really good things about me, but at the same time, he also sees my flaws, which is something that I, I take uh, pride in too, because I, I want to get better. And it sucks in the moment hearing, you know, being yelled at in front of your teammates or something. But, you know, you need, if, if I could take what the coach is saying in front of everyone, then maybe that, that'll motivate them to be like, all right, you know, if Pat, if Pat's taking, you know, stuff from the coach, then maybe I got to be more coachable and stuff. So I like to be that guy who kind of is like the leader in that aspect um, but he always he always pushes me. Um, he sticks to his word, I think, in my opinion. Obviously, everyone's going to be different, but I was grateful enough to be coached by him and learn uh, learn everything I can in one year. So that's awesome. So, you know, you talk about him calling out some of your flaws. What do you think is the weaker parts of your game? You know, from my eyes, you know, sure, I'm just like a casual fan. But to me, it seemed like you had a pretty well-rounded game I would say you know um because I thought you had great footwork you could shoot the ball you could handle the ball and then even on the defensive end you know I think there's that one game in the tournament when you had like five blocks or something so <laughs> so I want to hear what you have to say about what you think the flaws in your game are well thank you I'll give you the hundred dollar bill after for making me look <laughs> um no but I think uh when you know, when I, when I want to, I, I want to be a pro. So obviously everyone's going to be similar to, you know, myself and even way better. So I think uh, I have to, you know, get a stronger lower base to be more balanced sometimes on my moves, which can be tough because I'm very tall. So my center of gravity is, um, you know, can be very uh, not that balanced. Um, and I think just strengthening my lower body, um, just better defensive an anticipation to, um, and just staying lower to the ground, I think, just things that I could tweak too. Um, but I think my skill level is pretty good, just maybe uh, sharpening up, you know, my free throw percent percentage too, getting it over 75%, and I think I'm good. I mean, no, I'm just going to keep getting stronger too. Um, but yeah, just little things. I'm not trying to like be in the gym and add 100 different moves because it's really instinctual, everything that comes to me. Uh, sometimes I, sometimes moves just, I, you know, I look like a celebrity to some people, but when I sometimes moves in the game, they just, ha I, I never practice them. I just do it. And it's just, sometimes I'm lucky enough that um that happens to me. Uh, so, you know, yeah. So I just think I need to get stronger, better core and better defensive anticipation. That's probably what every team's going to say about me. Uh, gotcha. So, yeah. So do you have a, either a trainer or a strength conditioning coach that you're working with? So basically right now, I'm um, just working, uh, using the Maris facilities, working with my coaches and, uh, you know, I, the next step, which you're probably going to ask is I need to hire an agent. So after that, it depends which agent I hire. They have some pre-draft stuff that I could do with them. So it's very flexible. It's just as long as I, I keep working and staying in the gym. So I don't need any fancy, you know, trainer, but there are really good options that I could use from here and there. So yeah, to your to answer your question, yes. Cool. Um, so I guess yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, you know, now that your time at the college level is over, what are your plans for the future? You know, like what's next? So the number one thing right now is to graduate um, college, which is kind of challenging right now. No, no I'm playing. It's it's cool. good. Um, I'm on track, thank God. Um, but after graduation and all that, obviously I want to play professional. So it kind of all starts now. I, I've been, I've been invited to Portsmouth, which is a very, um, it's a very good showcase. It's for the top seniors around the country to play in front of NBA European overseas scouts, which is the first step uh, to kind of, you know, show yourself in front of all these people, you know, turn eyes hopefully, but everyone's good. So I think there's a reason why everyone was invited. So I'm not too worried. I'm not nervous. I'm just going to be myself um, and let my journey kind of speak for itself. And if I don't do good, I don't do good. But, you know, this year definitely helped me. Um, so that would be depending on how I do there. You know, it's the next step, whether or not you get MBA workouts, um, you know, 
then yeah that it, it's all like a domino effect so yeah cool that's awesome um just gotta keep doing your thing you know just keep showing everyone what you're capable of but um outside of basketball do you have any any other hobbies any other things that you like to do yeah i mean i love to um i love to play tennis which sounds kind of crazy but i love to play any sports but just tennis specifically um I, I love playing whether it's outside or inside. I also love to watch tennis and just, uh, I love to watch sports, whether it's with my friends, um, family, it just, I think it brings everyone together. It's nothing like watching a big sports game or something with your friends. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, love to listen to music, go to the gym. I would like to run more often like yourself. Um, yeah. uh, I love to run with headphones too. long drives, traveling, all that good stuff. So cool. Yeah. cool. Well, I mean, if you ever need like a conditioning coach or, you know, want to oh. go for a run, just let me know. Okay. I don't know if I'll be, a, is a six, is six thirty mile good or no, is that not good? <laughs> uh, th that's okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you have a favorite NBA player? Favorite NBA player. I, I have a lot, but I'd say Dirk Nowitzki, Dirk Nowitzki is my favorite player, okay. even though he's retired. Um, and then, you know, I like Lowry Market into, um, yeah, so I love those big guys who could stretch out for it. So kind of like yourself, right? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be uh, just a fraction of what those players are. So that's kind of what I mimic my game after. Just, you know, in order to be a player like that, you have to shoot good from three because then, you know, every, uh, you know, guards will probably be like, why is he shooting? Because that's just the stereotypical thing. Uh, but if, you're, if your numbers could back you up, then, you know, it's all good. That's awesome. So I've just got a few more questions for yeah. you. Um, so here's a fun question that I wanted to ask you. Um, so if you were an, if you and I were to play one on one, do you think I would even get a a a, a point off you or no? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. My defense, you know, you can blow right past me. I, I may look intimidating, but no, if you put on a good move, you'll get a nice layup or a shot or two. But... I think you're just being humble, but. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know if you could guard me though, but I don't think I could guard <laughs> you. So it's a trade off. Yeah, probably not. But um, <laughs> so I guess that was the last thing I wanted to ask you. Thank you so much, Pat, for doing this. It was really cool to hear your story. I'm looking forward to what you do in the future. And, you know, I'm definitely a fan. So I hope you do big things. Well, thank you, Easton. Thanks for having me.